Aloha kakahiaka in Hawaiian that's good morning. Good morning. Uh, this is Kimo Hussey coming to you from Hawaii and I am very very excited about what uh, I'm going to share with you today. Yesterday this wonderful wonderful and beautiful instrument came uh, to me was delivered uh, and it comes all the way from North Carolina. This is a tenor ukulele made by Jay Lichty. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about uh, the shik. Isn't it beautiful? Uh, the top is uh, sinker redwood, and as I and as I rotate the ukulele, you will see that it has a side uh, a sound side port, uh, which I dearly love. The sides and the back are Brazilian rosewood. It has <clears throat> a radius uh, a radius fretboard. And um, probably uh, the, the most unique thing about this ukulele, uh, especially for those of you who make ukuleles, is that it has a 19-inch scale. Um, generally, with tenor ukuleles, the, the scale, the length uh, of, of the ukuleles is, is generally no more than about 17 inches. But by increasing uh, the, the length of uh, the, the scale, what it does for the player, and the reason why we had we had this designed this way, is it provides more room on the fretboard, more horizontal space for fingers to operate, and and I like that very much. It's a matter of it's a matter of being comfortable um, on the fretboard. The other thing with regard to having more room is that this ukulele has 15 frets uh, to the body. Generally, the ukuleles we play uh, generally have 14 frets to the body, so it means down here, around the 10th and the 12th fret, we can actually play chords and have them and have them sound pretty good. A lot of times on concert ukes or certainly on tenor ukes, once you get past uh, the fifth fret, we start running out of sound really fast. And so one of the reasons for extending the length uh, other than sound, and we'll get to sound in just a little bit, uh, is to provide more room uh, for the player's fingers to operate. And I personally, I personally like that. I like the idea of having more space to operate. Speaking of space to operate, one of the things about uh, the, the, uh, the, the width, the width of this ukulele is that it's just a tad wider. Uh, than, uh, than what we are accustomed to. And for me, personally, uh, the reason for that is to put more vertical spacing uh, between the strings, uh, again, so that my fingers don't get really, really squinched. Um, and, and I think, personally, uh, when my fingers are a lot more comfortable uh, in, in playing the music, that, that the music responds uh, accordingly. So, so this ukulele, other than other than being very very beautiful in terms of looks, again as you can uh, you can see, it has a really really classical beautiful look about it. Playability is something that uh, I've been talking about with regard to the length uh, of the fretboard. I mentioned earlier that it has a radius uh, on the fretboard, and again the reason for that. Uh, is to make the ukulele easier to play. So looks and playability, number one, number one. But the thing that uh, we uh, uh, haven't talked about yet is sound. Just listen to this and this and this and you notice how clear how clear the sound is. One of the things that actually controls sound um, a lot is the kind of strings that we use. You know that there's a there's a difference between uh, tuning high G as opposed to low G tuning, and we're accustomed to that. But because of the differences in strings, there's, there, there's so many things we can do to, to alter, to change the sound of the ukulele. And so the idea is 
just as we play different songs uh, in, in order to enjoy different things about music, we can actually use different strings on our ukuleles, whether or not they're tuned high G or low G, to change the sound. This set of strings, first of all, other than being low G, has two wound strings on it. The G string is a wound string and the C string is a wound string. And it results in a different sound. You know, that uh, if, uh, if, uh, uh, if this were a high G, that the uke would have a completely different sound. There are strings made uh, where uh, this low G and the C string, and in fact the whole set, strings is unwound and all of those have different sounds. So one of the things I would recommend that you do in the course of uh, making judgments about different strings is never ever to look for the best set of strings. Uh, to the degree to which there is no such thing as the ultimate instrument, I think also there's no such thing as the ultimate string set because different strings drive ukuleles differently. And so the wonderful thing about that, uh, about that is it provides us, uh, it's, it's kind of like a cafeteria where you go down the line and you like this sound and this sound and this sound and you're going to take that and combine it, uh, combine it with uh, this song or this other song and that's how we grow. It's very important uh, uh, for us to grow in the course of learning to, to play our ukuleles better because the degree to which we continue to grow is the degree to which we continue to have fun playing the ukulele. Around the world, the number one reason why people so enjoy the instrument is that it's fun, so let's keep it fun. Okay, uh, finally let me, play, let me play a song for you on this wonderful ukulele. Despite everything I said with regard to sound, uh, I'm sorry, with regard to playability and looks, still, uh, the thing that I like best about this ukulele is the way it sounds. I'll play, uh, I'll play a song for you. It's a Japanese song uh, that, uh, uh, that has been popular in, uh, in Hawaii for decades. Uh, the title of this song, as I know it, is Kokoni Sachiari. Uh, and, and I don't know the words to it, but that's okay because I'm just going to play the song and the melody for you. time.